Hey QED coders, Michael L. Perry here. In the last episode, we talked about idempotency and why it's so important in a distributed system. Idempotency is a term that comes up quite often when you're talking about REST, and so let's talk about that this episode. REST is an architectural style created by Roy Fielding when he was creating the HTTP standard. This style is representational state transfer. That means that we've got representations of resources that we're transferring between client and server. Now, we're not talking about a specific client-server API. It's not one client talking to one server. This was an open standard created for any vendor to implement a server and any vendor to implement a web browser, a client, agnostic of the application. And that agnostic nature is what gives REST its power. So once a client has a representation of a resource, what can it do with it? That's where the HTTP verbs come in. HTTP is built upon the REST standard, and so it doesn't have a specific application level API. Instead, it has a list of generally accepted verbs. So this is not a complete list of the verbs, but some of the verbs that you might see in common practice. The most common are get, put, post, and delete. Now, you'll see that these are grouped. The top group here are those that are considered safe. The HTTP standard guarantees that a server will not change the state of a resource if you use one of these top verbs. It's safe. That next set is the set that's guaranteed to be idempotent. The server will not change the state of the resource more than once if you use one of these idempotent verbs. That last set doesn't carry any guarantees. So it's possible that a server could be set up to where every time you post, you'll get a new resource created. There's no guarantee that the server will catch those duplicates and ignore them. Now, let's suppose that you built a historical model and you put it on a server, and now you want to have a RESTful API to that historical model. How would you do it? In a historical model, every one of the records is immutable. So if you were to get and get back a record, then every time you get, you would get the same version of the record. That wouldn't be interesting. Put would be impossible because put would try to update that record, and the record's immutable. Delete would similarly be disallowed. So a RESTful API for a historical model wouldn't use the actual records as resources. No, instead, a historical model would use a set of successors as resources. Say, for example, you had this particular historical model. We've got some parent, some predecessor up here, and it's got a few successors. Each one of those successors then has a mutable property. So we see this tree of versions of that mutable property hanging off of them. And so we can see what is the current version of those mutable properties by looking at the leaves of those trees. In this first one, the tree only has one leaf. It does not fork. There have been no conflicts. In the second one, we have a fork, and we're left with two leaves. And so in that second successor, we've got two candidate values for the mutable property. And then the third one doesn't yet have any versions of its mutable properties. So in a historical system, I would have a uniform resource locator that points to this entire tree. It points to this root predecessor, but then it runs the query. It gets all of the successors and the current versions of their mutable properties. And then it packages those up in a representation and sends it down to the client. That representation includes a URL for each of the successors and version information about each of those different mutable properties. So we know which version is the candidate, which version is current. In the case of mutable properties that have multiple candidates, we get both of those candidates and both of their version numbers. So that's what a get looks like in a historical system. Now let's see what it looks like to put back to one of these resources. So I want to put a new version of the mutable property to that first successor. So the put is going to use the URL of that first successor, and it's going to carry with it the version information of that leaf. 
And that way, when we insert a new version whose predecessor is the current version, it will become the new leaf of the tree. In the case of the second successor, we have two candidates, two possible versions. So we send them both down to the client, and then a client can put a new version of that mutable property, listing both of those versions as predecessors. And so then the server can insert that new version and form a new leaf on that tree that graphs it back together. And so what about deletes? Well, of course, deletes are disallowed in a historical model. We're not going to actually delete the record. But what we can do is insert a new successor. We can insert a new record that says that this particular object has been deleted. And then the next time that we get this root URL, that particular successor will not be included in the result. So it has effectively been deleted, but we did so by doing an insert. And now what about our good friend post? The one that is not guaranteed to be idempotent. In a historical model, we really want things to be idempotent. But there's nothing saying that a post can't be idempotent. It's just that the standard does not guarantee that it has to be. So in a historical system, we'll make posts idempotent. And the way that we'll do that is when you post to this root URL, you're going to post a particular successor that you want, and then we'll check to see, do you already have it? If not, we'll insert it. And if we do already have it, then we do nothing. So we make posts idempotent by carrying enough information with that post in order to see if we already have it. In fact, this strategy works for all the verbs. Whenever we put a new version of a mutable property, we first check to see, do we already have that version? Do we already have a record with those same predecessors and that same value? If so, do nothing. And also delete. Have we already issued a delete for this particular fact? If so, do nothing. So put, post, and delete in a historical system are considered idempotent. And that makes it much better for a distributed system than your typical REST API. Now, in order for us to know whether you already have a record, we need to be able to uniquely identify them. And so that gets to the heart of historical modeling, uniqueness and identity. And so we'll talk about those in the next episode. Come on back. <laughs>